This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and this week we're joined by Lilac Specs. Hi! Good morning. And Mr. Chaos. Hello. Um, so, before we go any further... Why don't you tell everyone where your blog is? Um, <laughs> well, my blog is um, www.lilacspecs.com and it originated in Pittsburgh, but now since I have moved to Belgium, it's moved from Belgium. It's moved it's, with you all the way across the ocean. Indeed, and it was upgraded and made prettier. When it I is. Got it. It's very pretty now. Yes, thank you. I, I, I might still change it because I'm having problems with the column thing still, but, I mean, it's definitely much improved since the original blog spot. Mm-hmm. No offense to anybody who the first blog spot just wasn't my no, I I use blog spot still because it's kind of the devil you know thing. Mm-hmm. I've tested out some of the other um, blogging platforms and... I always seem to find as many problems with them as I found as I have found in the past with Blogger. So I've kind of learned to work around its problems. The, well, it was funny because the major, not the major thing, but a big thing that really I didn't like about Blogger was you couldn't do the strike for it. Well, at least I've never seen it done on Blogger. Um, like when you strike the letters. I think there's a a way to insert the coding to do it. I've seen people do it. Uh, I'm just too lazy. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, I didn't want to have to go playing with HTML just to do a strike through. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, yeah, that, and anytime I try to use a different template, like a customized template or something that off of Tizam, I know other people can get it to work. I can never, ever get it to work. It always screwed up my layout or just didn't work at all, and it just seemed like there was more freedom to just go with the dot .com and start off with a different platform. But, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It works. So whatever works for you. So, uh, you did a really creative thing and you asked your readers what you should talk about on the show. Yes, because I had no money. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I, um, I figured chances are my readers, especially because a lot of them are just, like, personal friends or my parents or my family, you know, they're going to be the ones listening to it, aside from your readers, obviously, so they should mm-hmm. have some say in what's about. So, if you feel like drawing on their ideas, feel free. Well, I think we've got two two jumping off points, and one of them is to go with what your readers have said, and the other one is that earlier this this morning I printed out the list of hundred things that you put up on your blog. Sneaky. I'm a sneaky, sneaky girl. <laughs> sneaky so, and resourceful, and I can tell you really that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. De Poppin says, "Did I miss this?" No, De Poppins, you didn't miss it yet because. Oh, do I need music? It's going to be a recording, and you can listen to it whenever you want to. Yes, hi, De Poppins. Question one. She would like you to talk about the cultural difference and the language and travel, and she'd also like you to be really, really funny. Please. She didn't say please, but I added that in. So, she was demanding, actually, that I could do it. Yeah, but it was with a period and not with an exclamation point, so she was politely demanding that you be really funny. Okay. Does everyone realize that it is, like, you know, before 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning for me? So, if my level of funny is a bit down for demand. We should make I, that clear. It's the very end of my day, and I have a martini, and you just woke up. So, we're yeah, not... Yeah, like, I had my... my <laughs> Penicillin and birth control and tea cocktail and it's and I'm sitting in my pajamas wiping like eyeballs out of my eyes. I kind of wish I was in my pajamas. <laughs> Maybe I should put my pajamas on before I did the show. That would have been a good idea. 
Should we do it the cocktail? Kind of like the lilac and chaos pajama party. Oh, see, that would have been. Let's just say I'm in my pajamas. Okay, I, I will mentally put you in. Welcome to the lilac. That's not and how it sounds. Cami chaos pajama party. No, no, no. That's not how it sounds. It would sound something like this. Oh my gosh! Welcome to the lilac and cami chaos pajama party. Totally. Like, do you want to have a pillow fight? Okay. Mr. Chaos has just been very quietly informed that if he doesn't lay off the music tonight, fingers will be broken. Uh, I know I didn't break the fingers last week, but... People dig the music. People, but you, I can't hear over the music. So, she would like you to talk about the cultural differences between uh, Pittsburgh and Belgium. I assume that's what she's talking about. Yeah, um, I'd say that's a very, uh, there's a lot of, like, subtopics in that one question, so let's, let's take it subtopic at a time. Um, culturally, let's see. Um, people here are a lot more introverted. Um, I know at least on the East Coast, Pittsburghers are a lot of the time considered to be very extrovert and friendly and helpful, and they'll, like, you know, just randomly comment on how beautiful your baby is or how they like your new haircut or something like that and over here like I've seen mothers like struggling to get a stroller off the bus and like one person might sort of step up and kind of help them wow and it's not yeah and people here aren't mean they're just very introverted like if I sneeze in Pittsburgh four people on the bus say bless you Mm -hmm. if if I sneeze here it's like silent that's funny I was just about to sneeze (laughs) no joke that's true (laughs) Well, you better sneeze in Pittsburgh instead of in Belgium, honey. Yeah. <laughs> when I can uh, break the rule and bless you, I guess, if you really need it. Uh, a few weeks ago, we, we took my mom to the airport um, so she could fly. But she'd been visiting. And uh, when we were catching the train back away from the airport, there were a couple of girls coming in to Portland for the first time ever. And I believe they were coming in from Phoenix, uh, somewhere in Arizona. And they were marveling at the fact that, you know, they were trying to catch the light rail, our max train. They were trying to do this. They were trying to do that. They were trying to figure out where the, to go, what to do. And everybody that they even walked past was trying to help them and had suggestions. And and yeah. they couldn't figure out how that worked. Yeah, I think in a lot of, there's certain towns, I've, I've certainly heard that about uh, Portland. I think I've heard about Seattle, Pittsburgh. Probably Cleveland, but they're Ohio, so I hate them. Um, but there, I mean, there's definitely cities where people are friendlier and more outgoing, and they want you to see their town. Mm-hmm. Um, this really isn't one of those. No. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to see, and if you ask someone for directions, they'll help you. It's just not the same kind of outgoing, friendly, everybody can be your friend type thing. Yeah. Which. You know, it actually kind of works for me because that's how I am naturally, and I always had a hard time like, pretending to smile and, <laughs> and be super nice when I really was kind of like, I don't know you. So it kind of works, but at the same time, I spent my whole life getting used to people being friendly and making small talk with the cashier and stuff, and now over here, it's like, everyone's a talk I could do without the cashier small talk. It's, it, you, would, you would be amazed how much purchasing those. Yeah, I really, I think Just, that I'd be okay with that part of it, for sure. Yeah, it's Well, like, the waitresses, well, I don't know, it's probably common knowledge, but maybe not, like, over here you don't tip. It's just included in the price. I mean, waitress and, waiters and waitresses get a regular wage. Mm-hmm. So, the service, well, the service can kind of suck if you're used to, like, the waitress checking on you every ten seconds, but it's so nice to just be left alone. Yeah. Nobody comes over with their pieces of flair and bugging you and wanting to know what you want refilled and if everything's okay and you can't finish a conversation because they're popping their head in every ten seconds. It's actually very nice to just eat and talk and look. Is- so, but I mean, I guess when I first came over here, I thought the service was horrible. And now that I've been here for a couple of months, when we went back to Pittsburgh, I wanted to smack the waitress because she wanted to have her face. <laughs> That's what happens so, in Portland. Why are you talking? That's what happens in Portland. What happens in Portland? I smack well, waitresses. In, in, no, in Portland. I don't really smack waitresses. No, I like I like wait staff. No, everybody's friendly here in Portland, and so you hang out, and people are really nice. And then you go to a restaurant where you want a quiet, 
in a booth. Don't bother me. And if it's one of those crazy restaurants where someone's bugging you every five minutes, you're like, just get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You know? Right? Yes. Yeah. Am I right? You want to tell them, like, look, you're getting a tip, okay? Just back off. Yeah. Exactly. Just bring, just bring <laughs> me my food. Yeah, if you, if you give me my beverage and you give me my food and leave me alone, I will tip you. If you don't stop talking, I'm going to scream. So what was the last nice yeah. meal you had, Miss Kami Chaos? The last nice meal that I had? Yes. I Am I missing was. something? Was it an Italian restaurant? Oh, it was an Italian restaurant. Is it a, a Chena? Is that how you say it? I can't pronounce Something it. Something like that, yeah. For my birthday, we went to an Italian restaurant in our neighborhood. That was the nine-course meal that I read about in The s- seven-course. Yes. Yes, ah. it was the seven-course meal. And it was absolutely fantastic. I was amazed. I went in, and it, 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 uh, it replaced an Italian restaurant that had been there for a while that had changed owners um, and gone downhill. And so it was kind of... A, we had no idea what we were going into because we'd heard really good reviews and really bad reviews. And I guess as long as you get the tasting menu, you're good to go because the things that they presented were just one raw after the oysters, other. Raw oysters, raw... Um, I don't eat raw oysters. I've never liked them in my life. I wanted more of the raw oysters that they brought me. Scallops. Yeah. Yeah, I remember reading it. And, well, first of all, it seemed like very interesting food, like not something I would typically imagine for an Italian restaurant, but I've never actually been to Italy, so maybe everything that I think is Italian is not. <laughs> it's Americanized. It wasn't really Wow, that's not something I would have thought to combine, but it sounds really good. Yeah, I think my favorite was the um, asparagus spears wrapped in uh, pancetta, oh no, serrano, in serrano ham, and then in puff pastry, and then cooked, mm-hmm. and then dipped uh, mm. Oh, and then it had a a fontina cheese sauce, Bacon. and then dipped in a soft boiled egg. Oh, jeez! We need bacon music. I need. I do need bacon music, but not tonight. Not to, no no bacon music tonight. I, I'm out of bacon. I'm out of bacon. That is not bacon music. I'll say bacon. No bacon. It's bacon for dinner. Bacon for lunch. Bacon for breakfast. That's the bunch. I said bacon. Bacon. That's not bacon music. Thank you. No. Yeah. I, uh, I actually <laughs> did a, um, a music video for someone's TV show in college, and I, I forgot about this until just now, uh, to a music video called Naughty Bacon, in which I was <laughs> in bed, posed coitally with a piece of bacon. Mm. I was topless and everything, so the impression of me. Now, in Portland, that would make you an incredibly popular and cool girl because there's something about the city of Portland and their love of bacon. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. I might have to, if we ever move back to the United States, we might have to just relocate to Portland. You're, it's like all my favorite bloggers are there and they sound like the West Coast version of Pittsburgh. Awesome. I've never been to Pittsburgh. It's, it's, a, it's a nice town. It's definitely a nice one of the, I don't know, more known cities maybe, but it, it's not like scary or too big or dirty. It's, it's actually very nice. You know, I think it's the first time I've ever heard anyone talk about a city on the East Coast being a nice city. Yeah, there's not too many of them. I mean, I've been to New York. I hate it. I've been to Philly. I had to be on high amounts of drugs to like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard that I, about Philly I, before, so. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, it's um, Myrtle Beach is nice. Like, the beach towns are kind of nice, but not because of the people. It's just nice because you're at the beach. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, there's really, we don't have a fantastic reputation in the East Coast for wonderful friendly cities. But Pittsburgh definitely is it's a very nice place to be. I think, um, yeah. you mentioned all the bloggers in Portland. We really do have a lot of bloggers here. Yeah. It's kind of like, strange. Well, I, was, I thought it was so weird when I was reading how everybody was meeting up, and I was thinking, like, how are all these people coming together? I mean, and then I realized, well, like, they're in the same city. <laughs> it made yeah. it very easy, I guess. Well, with it, you know, there's the, all the Portland suburbs, and then actually some of them live in Vancouver, Washington, which is mm-hmm. just over the bridge. Right. Uh, including Miss Burroughs. Hi, Miss Burroughs! Would you like to say anything disparaging about Vancouver, Washington for Miss Burroughs or Mr. Hockley or... No, I'm not going to say anything disparaging about Vancouver. Except for that 
I have to pay taxes on things if I go buy them in Vancouver, and I'm not partial to that. There's no sales tax in Portland or in the city of in the state of Oregon. Seriously? Seriously, we have no sales tax. We have a higher other taxes, but we have no we have no sales tax. So uh, if we go to Vancouver, well, actually, I, I guess you don't really have to. I guess if you show them your Oregon ID, they have to fill out paperwork, <laughs> and then you don't have to pay the sales tax or something. I remember this from buying a toilet or some tile or something in Vancouver. So the last time I went to Vancouver was to buy tile for our bathroom remodel. Did you do all the paperwork or did you just suck it up and do the taxes? No, I think Mike made them made them do the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. It was, but you know, it was some money. We spent, you know, Yeah. we spent enough money that it was worth it. Yeah. So I gotta ask yes. you. This this is another East Coast question, real quick. Uh, uh, did you catch the whole barista barista thing? I did, but to be totally honest, like I was in and out of the room, like because okay. it, it was so it here's, was an enjoyable podcast. It was a long podcast. It was so a was very like, long, um, long like podcast. Coffee. And, so here's um, the the issue was this. Yeah. He was watching a CNN article about the baristas at Starbucks suing to get back their wages, their tips, which wasn't the problem. The problem was is that the reporter called them baristas. or bar- I can't even say it. How, how did they say it, honey? Baristas. Yes, she called them baristas. And I was a barista. How do you okay. say it? I have always said barista, but... Um, nobody's ever told me how to pronounce it, so that's just what I've, how I've mm. said it. But at the same time, if, if, if you told me it was Italian in origin, which I assume it probably is, then I could certainly, I, I would probably say barista. Okay, from now on, you should say barista. Okay, if they ever <laughs> put a Starbucks or any kind of coffee shop in Belgium, I will be sure to call them baristas. Well, I don't drink Starbucks, but... They, they don't have coffee shops of any kind there? Um, they have cafes, but it's not the same as, like, a Seattle's Best or a, or a Starbucks or any of the... I was a barista, too, actually, for a little while. So, uh-huh. like, um, it's... But it, the, the environment's not the same. Like, you can go and get a coffee, but there's not, like, a, a specific coffee shop. It's not like you go in and you say, hey, give me my coffee and my to-go cup and you take off and go? Not really. Like, you can, but it's not... Wait a minute. Um, Is it, hey, give me that coffee and all the cash that's in the cash register right now. Thank you very much. That's the way you said it, right? Have you... Well, to go, to go actually isn't a big thing here. Like, you don't get doggy bags. You don't typically take things to go. It's actually, seems like lately it's becoming a more popular trend, but up until now, it really hasn't been an option. Wow. Yeah, so there's only a few places that I know, actually, that um, you can go in and say, like, I'd like to get a coffee to go, or I'd like to get this to go. And it's interesting, because they actually charge less if you take things to go, because you're not taking much space in your restaurant. Hmm. I I really like to go things. I don't... I, um... Yeah, I I like to go. I don't like to be... I'm a, I am a home person. I love to be in my house. Mm. Yeah, I am. Um, I agree. I'm a homebody too. The yeah. only problem I have with to-go things is the packaging. Um, just it's just so much extra garbage. But, but I don't know. We have to recycle over here. Like everything's recyclable: paper, cardboard, glass, plastic. Everything's recyclable. So. I just got used to trying to reduce the amount of waste. Yeah. To go things are just so much more waste. Yeah. And I noticed that when we were visiting in Pittsburgh, like, there was just so much garbage. Like, garbage everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I, and I don't know how, if this is completely accurate. We have some neighbors um, from overseas, and they were telling us that America actually started the entire recycling craze and the the insistence upon recycling and whatnot but I think since then we've really fallen behind yeah um well as far as the history of recycling I'm not sure who started it what I do know is that over here they're much more diehard and thorough about it 
like maybe we did start it, but we certainly haven't followed up on it the way Europe has. Well, Western Europe. Yeah. But I mean, there's definitely been a difference between Eastern and Western Europe, mm-hmm. which I thought everybody knew. But uh, when we were home and discussing with like some of my relatives, I, I mean, I think a lot of Americans are under the impression that parts of Europe are a lot more progressive than they actually are. They think so, Europe is a giant hole. Like a you know just one big hole. <laughs> well, when not I first not like a hole that, in the ground, but like a I'm big. Excuse you know. me, this connection's bad. A giant what? <laughs> Europe is a giant what? One hole, a whole unit. W h o l e, whole, as in not broken into parts. I was kind of thinking you were going with the dark endless pit too, but W h o l e makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's like a hole. That's not nice. We're not that misinformed. I am not typically the person on the show that starts insulting European countries. That's usually what my husband does. <laughs> well, I have to be careful because, like, if I direct some of my readers over here, I, there's at least three readers that I have that are Belgian, and mm-hmm. I don't want them to get pissed off. <laughs> I'm not insulting. No. No, what I'm saying is, is that I think that Americans find that Europe as a whole is... Yes. They 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 think that it's more connected than it is. Yes, I uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think and I think people assume that like the European Union entails a lot more than it does, and like just because Poland's part of the European Union doesn't mean that the whole of Western Europe approves of some of their practices. Like yeah, some some countries have found ways like sneaking their way into the EU through loopholes and stuff, and it's it's interesting. To see, but yeah, we were over talking with I think my mom or something, and I was I was saying something about the Russian students in my language class. Uh, I'm not sure how long or how frequent you read, but for quite a while, I was complaining about this one girl that's Russian. And she looked like a hooker. I thought of the Russian hooker. Hopefully, she never reads my blog. <laughs> I don't know her name or anything, but like I wrote whole sections like telling her off in my blog. <laughs> but um. I just found that the, the students that are Russian, and I really, I, I mean, there's so many different nationalities in my class that I, there's, you know, I can't be racist, or I can't be stereotypical, because I've met people now from so many countries, and, you know, you just have to be careful when you're making assumptions when you're in that kind of mixed environment. But the Russian people are mean. They're nasty. They're just they're mean. They're not nice. They're rude. They, they're like, kind of seeming like and it could just be that they're that way towards me because they know I'm American I'm not sure um but I was making comments about it and my mom was like well I thought Russia was very civilized and, and they're not like Moscow is but the rest of the Russian countryside is still very oppressed and living in these tiny little villages with like no plumbing and and like my mom was just totally unaware of the fact that like most of Russia is still like pretty much crap like they don't have the common luxuries that we're used to today. And I think a lot of Americans sort of like, they see Moscow looking good and assume that like, oh, Russia's a great place to be now. And like, it's not. Yeah, I think that our attention right. um, by the media yes, especially has been drawn other places to other places that are in turmoil. Yeah. You know, we uh, finished the Cold War and now all of a sudden, eh, Russia, not so much important to us. Yeah, but there's a big high-tech economy there in the cities and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of you know, a lot of computer programmer folks, they've kind of grown that economy, so. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. The cities are definitely growing, but everywhere else, and if you picture how big Russia is, and how many big cities are in Russia, like, two, three. Where's all the bloggers? The bloggers from Russia. The Russian bloggers. That would be awesome. All their blogs would be gray. All their blogs right. would be What? Gray. Like, like the majority of your clothing? Well, um, yeah, actually, I've actually branched out with my clothing, and I've, I've entered the worlds of dark purple, navy, and black. Wow, I like some black clothing. Yeah, yeah, you, you, I, that's the impression that I get. <laughs> I don't branch, I that's branch, uh, let's see, I have black clothing, I have jeans, I have some pink, and some red. They do. Everything I have has to go well with black. Well, I think most things go well with black, but pink and red are just, they they bring out some of the best characteristics of them. I think so as well. (laughs) I'm a big, Um, big... It's it's 
funny, and again, when I lived in Pittsburgh, most of my wardrobe was gray, navy, brown, black. And I got kind of chastised by certain parental figures and certain other people that I should wear more colorful clothes. So I went and I bought more colorful clothes. And then when I moved here, everybody wears gray and navy and brown and black. So now I have this like whole bunch of colorful clothes that I feel like a pariah if I wear them. <laughs> See, you were just ahead of you. You were ahead of your time on the the gray thing, then. I was. I was ahead of my time on a lot of things. I used to eat with a fork and a knife, and I was corrected and told that when you eat correctly, you cut your food and then put your knife down. But sure enough, over here they eat with a fork and a knife. They think I'm weird because I don't eat with a knife. Mm. Yeah, I did the same thing so, in Copenhagen. Yeah, I mean, I was grooming myself to to immigrate my whole life, and and the man just put me down. What I did is I went to Copenhagen on Stupid business. Stupid man. And just, uh, you know, ate with a fork. And I was like, no, I'm not going to eat European style. And as soon as I got back home, I started eating European style. I was like, okay, screw it. I'm, I'm going to eat the way they eat in Europe. Because, you know, that's how I felt. Because I'm a... That's right. But it was funny. It was funny going over there and wearing, like, bright white Nikes and jeans and stuff in Copenhagen back in, like the late 90s and everyone's wearing like leather jackets and uh you're a real you're a I yeah. say you're a trash but you're it's a like, trash yeah, it's like uh, you know look at the American with his football yeah. jersey isn't that cute you didn't wear a football jersey no I didn't but thank god the other co-workers did <laughs> uh, yeah sports jerseys over here Nah, like you really just don't see it. That if you if you do see it, it's not on Belgians. It's on like different immigrant groups. Do they have soccer it's riots weird. over there? Not Belgium. I mean, in Europe they do, but not in Belgium. They don't have like you know their soccer team wins, and so they start turning trains over. You know, public transportation. No, no, they're not. Belgium's team's not good. <laughs> they're not good enough to uh, engender riots. Really. No, they're really not. They're not. They they really they. From what I can tell, they they have a, a really good tennis player, a female tennis player. So right now, a lot of them are in tennis and bicycling, cycling. They all like to watch cycling. Oh, the cycling. Oh, uh, so they just throw <laughs> throw bikes around. <laughs> well, like, well, the bike <laughs> the bike is a whole other thing. I mean, uh, bikes. That's another cultural difference. They're do they have do they have like the, free bikes and stuff like that? Around the city, lots of biking. Yes, um, especially where the city I'm in, Ghent, uh, the city center is Ghent. car free, so there's no cars in the actual center. It's like like if downtown Portland was car free. Um, yeah, you should yep. come to Portland sometime. The bicyclists would really like to take over the city here. It's not necessarily bad. Though. So, what is the capital I'm, of Belgium? Um, the capital of Belgium is Brussels, which is also uh, the capital of the, the, the European Union. And uh, what is the uh, square footage of Belgium? <laughs> what, is, what is wrong with it's, you? It's smaller than Pennsylvania. Smaller than Pennsylvania. Uh, it's, def- it's smaller than Pennsylvania. It's, um, I don't know what state to compare it to. If I was allowed to move close to the computer, I could probably look it up, but I don't want like, to see that. Name the that. three principal exports of Belgium. Do you want me to break his something? No, chocolate. Oh, I have a question. You were involved in the entire, uh, you know, Chocanaut frenemies experience, yes? Indeed, yes. Which side were you on? I was on the frenemy side. Thank goodness. I couldn't remember, but we were both really concerned that there would be something mentally wrong with you if you were living in Belgium and you were a Chocanaut. Yeah, actually, if I had been living in the United States, I very well might have taken a turn towards the other side, but I had just moved to Belgium, and I was like, there's no way that I'm living in Belgium and not eating chocolate for a month. Like, that would just be, I would have to be, something would be very wrong with me if that was what I decided to do. So I definitely went for the chocolate once a day thing. I feel, I feel good about that. Is, is the chocolate really that good? Oh, it is so good. It is so, so good. Like, that's why I continuously bribe my readers with chocolate. Like, if you do this for me, I will send you chocolate. Oh. So once you add it, like, you won't want any other chocolate. So that's How good, because she would be an expert, because you, uh, you know, you come from Pittsburgh, which, 
you know, I don't know how far away it is, but, you know, that's in the kind of Hershey kind of general vicinity, <laughs> right? I have been to Hershey. It's, it's about four hours away from Pittsburgh. Right. So you're a I chocolate expert, is that correct? I guess you could consider me a, a chocolate expert, or at least a semi expert For the purposes of this show, we will consider you a chocolate expert. You can bet that is just really good. Do we have chocolate any questions expert. for the chocolate expert? What, yes, what is the best true cocoa chocolate percentage in the best chocolate in Belgium? Well, really, that depends on what you like. I mean, because I personally like the super, super dark chocolate, and I would have to say that I would I prefer the uh, Cote d'Or 75% cacao with mix. Nice. Chocolate okay. expert, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That, that, that deserves music, yes. Music. Ladies and gentlemen, Lilac Specs. Chocolate expert. Um, yeah. We recycle <laughs> We recycle the music. Chocolate expert music, drink music, it's drink all the music. same. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's what I, uh, the thing, the difference is, at least this is what my boyfriend tells me, and he is much better with the details, so I'm sure he'll, like, listen to this after he wakes up and be correcting everything that I say, but that's okay. Um, the, the percentage of cacao used in their cocoa, it can't fall below a certain level, unless it, it um, if it does, then it's not considered Belgian chocolate. Right. Call it Belgian chocolate. Wow. And I think the level is, like, 40 or 50 percent. Right. That. Um, yeah, and at least, like, I mean, it's, seriously, it's sad. Like, it, I went back to the U.S. and I couldn't eat the chocolate there. Like, it just tasted horrible. So you've been like, ruined for, for American chocolate for the rest of your life. I, I actually have a legitimate chocolate question now that we're on this line of questioning. So if it has... And th- I, I really don't know this. If it has that higher percentage of... of the cacao, the chocolate, is it, is it actually by nature dark chocolate? Because it, isn't it like the milk chocolate that makes it a less, a lighter chocolate? Um, well, the, the difference is that there's cacao and then there's cocoa butter. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. So... Yep. You can still have a higher level of cacao and add milk as opposed to not using much cacao and just using cocoa butter. And, like, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, the, the, the chocolate made with more cacao and less cocoa butter tastes a lot better regardless of whether it's milk chocolate or dark chocolate. Gotcha. I believe, see, I like, I kind of like the milk chocolate, but I don't like the milk <coughs> chocolate, like the kind that they pour into those little crazy sad Easter bunny forms that taste like Ugh, it's, so it's not nasty. chocolate it's not chocolate that's not yes. chocolate but my you friend once have... gave me some really amazing milk chocolate that was not made from the cocoa butter yeah but it was milk chocolate so and oh. less cocoa butter and the more cacao the better the chocolate yeah, yeah. right yeah. It, it, it's like filler not, those Easter bunny things are just scripted. it's all yeah. like filler I should have made a chocolate yeah. cocktail for this show yes you should have do you want to tell us, since you're almost done with your drink, we have to do the drink no, segment? No, we already did the drink. No, we this, didn't. Do- we've had this one on a did former you- show. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a dirty dry gin martini. And that consists of? We've had this one before, but the dirty dry Bombay martini. A tiny, tiny bit of vermouth. Bombay gin. Olive juice. And two olives. Shaken. Poured into a martini glass. Up, not on the rocks. But we already had that martini on the show. Do you like martini? Me? Yeah. No, the uh, other guest we have on the show. <laughs> uh, I prefer margaritas. Uh, I have that here on my handy list of information. Do we need drink music again on no, the margaritas? No, we don't need okay. drink music again on the margaritas. I'm just Her favorite drinks are margaritas... A, a lager that I am not able to pronounce. Oh, Crown, Belgium. Crown Royal and Ginger Ale, Guinness, but only in Ireland. And recently, she tried a few Belgian beers. Yeah, indeed. Although it's no longer recently. But, no. Um, yeah, that. Uh, uh, is it? I lost my 
Oh, Guinness, like you said, like I can't really drink chocolate in America, or drink, eat chocolate in America anymore. Um, I went to Ireland a couple years ago and had Guinness there, and you can't have Guinness anywhere else. It just tastes lousy. Right. It just isn't done correctly. If you've never had Guinness in Ireland, I recommend it, but you'll be spoiling yourself for Guinness anywhere else. It's not the only beer like that. Like, um, uh, Czech a good Czech Pilsner is different in the U.S. I, I think it has less alcohol or something like that. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It has something to do with, like, like if you're actually in Europe and you drink, like, um, an Urkel or something like that, you know, it's 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 a lot better. I mean, it's yeah. still very good, what you get in the U.S. on the import, but it's it's different. Um, yeah. It's I don't so drink healthy. beer. I don't know. I, I don't drink a ton of beer. Yingling, that's what's on there that's unpronounceable. It's called Yingling. Uh-huh. Um, originally a microbrewery out of Pennsylvania, but I think it's in, it's definitely gotten bigger, but it might not have made it to the West. So there's got to be yet. tons of breweries over in Belgium, right? Because there's all the Belgian beers. There's like, and... Yeah, there's over 300 kinds of beer. All the, it, it, kind of like um, there's certain places in Germany, like in Belgium, they have like the where the monks brew the beer during the uh, yeah. fast. Yeah, exactly. Years. I think ch- ch- Chime or something like that is one of the most yeah, more popular Chime ones here. One of them. Uh, oh, yeah, those fancy That's Lato. probably like the Budweiser of Belgium, isn't it? <laughs> it's just sort of like, you know, they got Clydesdales going down the street going, oh, yeah. Budweiser, have a Chime. It's like, ah, oh, we'll send it over to the America. They won't know the difference, right? Um, actually, no, Chime is good. You don't yeah. get a bad Trappist beer. Like, Trappist beers aren't as good as Belgian beers. I'm trying to think of what it would be the thing like. That's hard to say, because, like, they really they have a, a lot of pride in their beer culture here, and they wouldn't market something that wasn't good. Right. No, you can um, get Chime over here, and it's uh, it's actually very nice. Yeah, yeah, my brother got it over there, and he was, like, falling in love with it. But uh, you can cook with it, too. You can mix it with it, which is very good. Oh, oh I, like, I like cooking with beer a lot. Yeah, it's, I, I was never a huge fan of it, mostly because I had only had, like, brat in beer, and mm-hmm. I'm just not a big fan of the brat workers, but um, Hans made a stew with pork, which I also typically don't like, but he made a stew over here with beer and, and pork, and it all was so good. <laughs> was, I want that so for good. dinner. <laughs> I'd like to I eat that now. Post the recipe, I'll have it. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. This summer, I've got a great, I got a great chili recipe that includes like four types of peppers. It's it's awesome, and a nice uh, dark Mexican beer, like a like a um, like a um, uh, Negro Modelo or something like that. Negro Modelo. What's that? I'm, all, the only, I'm not familiar with Mexican beers, and pretty much anything Mexican they import over here, so you don't see much of it. I, but I'm not a big fan, well. although the Modelos are really good. I like those. Mm. I like those a lot. I have a movie question for you. Okay. Oh, it's not the movie. I have several movie the questions for you. Sound of I have. Okay, he's right. I have more than one. I'm going through, and now if anyone's listening and wondering, the list of 100 things that I'm going through is on Lilac Specs blog. And it's off to the side in the right hand, and it says something like her 100 things. There's stuff off to the side on blogs? Off to the side on blogs. You should wow. look. And if anybody listening knows oh, oh, a good template, there's three, four, like four things that you yeah, if anybody knows a nice three column layout for lilac let let her know all right so now my questions so i'm wondering if i have to i have to get these in order now so we're talking about movies in one of the movies in one of the lists you say that you've never seen the sound of music all the way through I'm wondering if that has anything to do with number 56 that you've had recurring nightmares about being chased by Nazis. Or is it recurring nightmares about being chased by Julie Andrews? I think that's really the issue, isn't it? I like Julie Andrews. I love Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is one of my favorite kids movies. 
Mary Poppins, that's right. That's a very and the, prin- and the Princess Diaries, have you seen The Princess Diaries? I actually know I haven't seen The Princess Diaries. Julie Andrews is in that, too. She's, She's the queen mom. Julie Andrews is always good. Mm-hmm. But is the supporting cast as good as Julie Andrews? Yeah, uh, Hector so Alfonso like, is in that okay, movie. So you, I love so, that. So you don't like Christopher Plummer? You're not a Christopher Plummer fan? Then. You know is what I like know? Christopher Plummer in? What? Have you seen the, the movie Dragnet? Dragnet. No, the movie. I've seen the show. Dragnet. The movie, no, the movie Dragnet. Oh, we need to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, the movie Dragnet with uh, Tom Hanks and um, uh, at Dan Aykroyd yeah. and Christopher Plummer yeah. and Christopher Plummer. Oh my gosh! You know what? I just realized. I think that Dragnet is one of my favorite movies of all time, it's, and I don't even know it. It's a pretty funny it. one. And Dabney Coleman. And Dabney as Coleman as a pornographer. As a pornographer, that's right. That's right. So, but the really important movie question I wanted to ask you was, you've never seen The Usual Suspects because your dad... Who is Kaiser Sose? All right, we're not going to say who Kaiser Sose, Sose is because uh, if, no, someone, flip you, flip you for, if someone hasn't seen it, I don't want it to be ruined for them. Your dad told you who Kaiser Sose was? My dad was just... We were, it was a holiday and I was, discussed, I was sitting with my dad and my aunt and my dad and my aunt were discussing the movie, and I was just kind of sitting, and, and I lived at home at the time, so, like, and I spent a lot of time kind of hanging out with my parents, because I'm dorky like that. And, um, so they kind of, like, knew what I hadn't had seen, and I guess my dad didn't realize that I'd never seen the usual suspects, and he said who it was, and so I never bought it to watch the movie. Wow. I have that to say that it is, I mean, you kind of watch the movie just to, to get there. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I was reaching for something. My face was if away from my microphone. If you were watching the Ustream stream video feed, you would know this. <laughs> yeah, if you were watching the video feed, you'd know that I was With trying no to get sound. a piece of paper. Um, so, 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 so. I, I'm I, still talking. No, 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 no. I'm I, I honestly I'm think that now. that movie was worth watching, even if you do know who Kaiser Sose was. I get to talk. Because it was such a fantastic movie that when I was pregnant and on bed rest, <sighs> I watched it like 20 times. I want to say something now. So here's the thing. You know what? You're a smart person, and the first time I watched the usual, usual suspects about halfway through or whatever, you kind of got you the do. gist. You kind of figure out who it, it is. was. You're kind of like going, "Wait a minute," you know. I think I'm getting where this is going. It, it's not like a brain, you know. I mean, it's not as easy t- as like when you're watching Scooby Doo and you're, you're that like, kind of, "Oh, yeah." If you're that kind of person where you're watching where you watch movies and you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Where M. Night Shyamalan's movies don't surprise me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they exactly. don't. Exactly. Unless aliens okay. pop out, right? And then you're like, what the fuck? Anyway. Well, that I was kind of surprised. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's Just an really alien actually in the... Uh, the was that the one where the alien was in the closet Yeah, or yeah, and, and Mel pantry? Gibson yeah. was... I don't know. Mel, you know, yeah, good old Mel. the end of that movie killed the movie. It would have been a good movie had it not been for the end. Of course, Mel's career is going really well these days. Oh, yeah, he's doing great. I actually don't watch Mel Gibson movies anymore. I've gone on a Mel Gibson movie. Oh, yeah, we haven't watched a Mel Gibson movie since he made... Um, actually, I think the last one we saw was that one that since we just talked about. Since he was picked up by the Malibu police? <clears throat> yeah, it was before that, though. He just, you know... He stopped being interesting yeah, before he got crazier. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I probably stopped watching after... Um, the big one that I know is probably controversial to talk about, but oh, the Jesus um, one. Yeah, the passion. Yeah, I didn't see was, that like, one. I mean, I don't hide it. I mean, I'm Jewish. Well, I was raised Jewish, and religiously, I don't consider myself Jewish, but culturally, like that's my family. I'm, I'm Jewish. Yeah. And which, which it does correspond to the Hitler dreams. Not so much the the um, sound music, but definitely the dreams. Um, but so when he made that movie, I I was kind of like wobbling on whether or not to see it and then my brother went to go see it and when he came back he said that it made me guilty to be Jewish like it made him feel guilty and oh my god so I've never I've never seen that movie and I after that I totally stopped supporting anything that Milton had anything to do with because anybody who would make something that would make someone as like someone like my brother feel that way like it was just it had to be pretty uh, so, so it had to be so maybe you're just, uh, maybe you're having nightmares about Mel Gibson chasing you dressed as Julie Andrews from The Sound of Music. But could you could you leave it's Julie like, Andrews out of this? If you, 
if you grow up with like a conservative Jewish education, I guess, like I went to Sunday school and everything, and a big part of that education is um, learning about the Holocaust. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Like we've heard survivors speak and like seen plenty of pictures, and you see it from a very young age. I mean, some people want to shelter their kids till their certain age or whatnot, but I saw Schindler's List like when it came out, and I think I might have been like eleven. That like, would have been important. very. Uh... What What year were you born? Eighty one. Eighty one. Oh my God. Um. Yeah, I saw I saw Schindler's List when it came out, and I was a little older than that. I was born in seventy seven. Yeah. And at, at, for me, that was devastating. Yeah, it was. But at the same time, it's something that you're kind of brought up with, in a way. Like, yeah. That you're just made aware of it from a very young age. My, so my father uh, studied history, and mm-hmm. uh, we were presented with any human tragedy from a very young age, yeah. because he wanted us to know, you know, the cost of evil yeah yeah I mean, and, in a way it's, it's sad because i mean you have video games like i don't know what kind of i don't play very many video games but i remember when i was younger even just like you know mortal Kombat and like ripping people's heads off and, and now they have those games where you drive around like stealing cars and shooting people and like that's okay but then if you go to educate children about yeah like global tragedies then no 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 they're too young like it's kind of twisted that's why we play Wii Sports instead. Which is good. That's actually, that's probably very good for your health. You probably have a lot of movement in. Well, it's so fun you, and you it's think, not violent. So you so. think, so you think, like, some some of the games and some of the popular culture is a little too violent? Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh yeah. Definitely. Okay. I mean, it's especially, and again, back to the cultural differences, like, over here, you don't see violence. Right, right. Yeah. You just don't see, I mean, you see plenty of movies. Like, you see lots of nudity. Right. So, so, like so we've had that a funny, discussion a lot of times. Funny Mr. Home. Chaos story. Um, actually, I like this movie. I think it's a really good movie. But uh, in Copenhagen, on that same business trip with coworkers, want to go see a movie just right down the street from the, I don't know what the heck they call it. You know, San Francisco calls it the Metreon or whatever. It has some name like that in Copenhagen, right there in the middle of the city the movie theater so we go see a movie and in copenhagen pretty much the hollywood movies they're they're not they're not dubbed they're not subtitled because everyone knows english right um you know and we go see la confidential in copenhagen and i i I like i like that movie i like film noir I, i like the movie but at the end, with this big gun shootout, and by, I mean, the, the place was silent, and people were gasping. And it was interesting, because it was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like, it was, you know, it was violent, you know. But, I mean, it was kind of part of the whole Hollywood, I mean, it wasn't the most violent movie I've ever seen in my life. You know, it's just a lot of gunplay, a lot of Hollywood gunplay at the end of the movie. Um... And, and people just really, I mean, as opposed to American audience sort of fidget, you know, more popcorn in the mouth, more, you know, and you could just kind of hear the gasps and stuff and kind of the, ooh, ooh. It was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, um, it's, well, we just saw, an, um, it's called There Will Be Blood. Have you seen that yet? What's it called? No, we don't see a lot of movies that are in the theater. Uh, it's, um. Uh, in the theater because it takes a couple months over here to get what's in the theater there. Um, but it's it's a really good movie, but part of the plot line is that one of the characters is a very, like, is a zealot, like a religious zealot, very almost like screaming Baptist kind of in a church, like, I cast thee out, evil demon type character. Uh-huh. And the people in the audience were hysterical. Because over here, like, 90% of the people here are atheists. Like, the right. official religion is Catholicism, but nobody over here is really Catholic. Like, but they have, like, a atheists. month and a half off for Easter. Right? Well, of course they do. They have a month and a half it's, off for anything. A month and exactly. a half Exactly. Yeah, oh, it's an Easter holiday. But we're atheists. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh sign yeah. me up for that. <laughs> that is one of the beauties of Belgium is, like, they totally aren't religious, but they will take every religious holiday there is to get some that muffler. Scandinavia is the same way. I mean, it's like yeah, you know, I think most of 
lot of actually the countries and yeah. this region but, um, but um, yeah and it, it was like you know that's something that's kind of normal for us like we're just used to see being barraged with that kind of imagery and that kind of weirdness but the people in the audience here were I mean they thought it was like a joke like they thought that that when he was acting like that that it was there was going to be like a punchline you see, when I see behavior like that, I'm just horrified. Yeah. I'm not. I don't find it entertaining. What I find it joke? horrifying because people really are. Yeah. So, so, but I, mean, I personally, I was a little bit like freaked out by it, just because I was thinking like, no, you don't understand. Like, there actually are people that listen to people just believe them. So I just, like, I just want more European theater here. I want to see, you know. More naked people. Yeah. Naked well, people. Well, naked people, and there should be more, I mean, people, the thing that sucks about us, uh, Americans, I'm trying to find the right sound like, effect. <laughs> For naked people. Wait a minute. Oh, sucked, there we go. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. No, are you, are you I'm, I'm waiting for the sound effect. Oh, I, I, I well, th- I got this one. He's trying to find the one that goes, come on! Yeah, I was looking for that, but this one will work. Mr. Chaos just wants to see more naked people in the theater. Yo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I need to list my sound effects. More naked gangsters. Um, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. If you have naked gangsters, then you're going to wind up having naked violence. And we don't want any more violence. No, no, no. It's like the old... It's, it's like the old Cheech and Chong routine. It's like... No Man Dave's not here? No, no, no. The one about, you know, I'm going to, oh, God, I can't, I can't quote. It's something about, you know, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to shoot you, and then they change it to the European style of, of sex, and it's like, well, I'm going to mess, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't Are you tell familiar that. with Cheech and Chong? Um, vaguely. I, I've seen a little bit. But You're born in 81? Wow. That's why I was thinking she might not be very familiar with Cheech and Chong. My dad seemed to be a big Cheech and Chong fan. Dad, if that's not true. I'm sorry. My recollection is that you were a big oh, Cheech sure and Chong fan. I'm sure Daddy I, Chaos is a big so Cheech and Chong fan. I grew up with a really huge love of Cheech and Chong, which then um, <laughs> converted into some strange love of the show Nash Bridges because Cheech Marin was on it. Mm. And Don yes. Johnson. Yeah, I'm not a big Don yo. Johnson. What is with you and your yo? I'm not a big Don yo. Johnson fan, but I love Cheech no, Marin. I, I, I mean, I recognize... Cheech or Chong when they're in movies and I've I've seen a little bit of their routines together but I've never really been that interested. Oh, this is a good question. So so is Belgium like you know um, Amsterdam? I mean, do they have like <laughs> liberal kind of laws in the Cheech and Chong sort of realm? Not as liberal as Amsterdam. It's what it is. It, you can possess. I think up to five grams for personal use. You can possess it, but you can't transport it. So, like, say if you're coming back from Amsterdam and they pull you over for speeding or something, and they catch you with, with a, like a, a dime bag of pot, like you get arrested or, or fined or whatever they do. But if like you're sitting around your house and smoking, and like the police come to the door to ask you a question and you have a joint in your hand, like you're not going to get in trouble because you're allowed to possess it. You're just not allowed to transport. Hmm. Kind of a don't ask, don't tell kind of thing, right? Yeah, pretty much. Which, if, from what I can gather, a lot of Belgium's uh, policies are kind of like that. Don't ask, don't tell. Like, if you don't say much of anything, you stay below the radar, then you just don't want it. Well, that really um, encourages that whole, you know, keep to yourself, don't say, uh, don't say bless you when someone sneezes kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, pretty much. Like, if you don't say anything, then... No one's going to be able to catch you doing it. And uh, the major, it's, it's a civil disobedience thing. Really. They're very much, and they won't, I don't think any Belgian would ever be like, yes, but they're very, it's a very, the culture is very civil disobedient. Like, tax evasion is like a sport. Like, people just, because they have the third highest tax, the third highest taxes in the world. Um, so people here just evade taxes. Anyway, they can't because I mean, a big chunk of their salary yeah. is taken. Um, but like, for instance, like my boyfriend, like we were just talking about this the other day. His form of civil disobedience is that you're supposed to bike with a headlight, and you just like no. Damn, that guy's a rebel. Man, rebel, rebel. 
Man. So, That's yes, tough. But anything that is like... Well, the cops You're trying to change him, aren't you? Yeah. Are you trying to make him use yeah. a headlight? Are you trying to change him? Because you can never no, change actually, a man. You know yeah, that, right? He has this... He's a uh, rebel. Like, he's he's like the wind. Um, that he wears, like, when he's driving at night. Seriously, I mean, if you don't have a light when you're biking at night, it can be really dangerous, especially in the neighborhood. They have, like, a lot of crazy drivers that are from Turkey and Morocco, and their driving rules just aren't the same, and they follow the Turkish and Moroccan driving rules, not the Belgian driving rules, so you can get, like, mowed down pretty easy if you can't speak. So, um, I mean, he, de- he has a light, but it's, it's just, like, strap-on headlamp thing <laughs> that he uses, and I think the way he looks at it is punishment enough for not having headlights. So. Do they have helmet laws for bicycling? No, they don't. Yeah, do people well, wear helmets? Do, they're certain age have to, but oh, come on, the guy's not taking a light at night. You think he's wearing a helmet, right? I was just asking. We have this, you know, in Portland, the helmet law, I believe, I believe, I believe is 16 and under. And I see kids not wearing helmets, and I kind of start to freak. I get really irritated. We used to have one of those in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if they've taken it back or not. I know we had a helmet law for a while, but I don't know. Um, over here, adults don't have to wear them, but I do believe some children do. Um, especially in this city, like, you see even, like, real small kids, like, seven, biking with their parents the morning to school. So, I mean, they definitely want their kids' heads protected, and enough yeah. little kids are on bikes that, like, I'm sure they probably have some kind of law for kids under a certain age. I started wearing my bike helmet because, uh, my daughter had to wear her bike helmet in all fairness. And then when I had a really nice helmet, I decided I'd wear it all the time. And one evening, uh, Mr. Chaos and I went out for a lovely bike ride. And on the way home, I decided I could ride my bicycle up our very steep driveway. Our driveway was a little too steep to drive my big, huge cruiser up. And I literally uh, fell over. The bike fell over on top of me. I just fell backwards off of the bike, pulling the bike down on top of myself. And luckily I was wearing my helmet because I smacked my head so hard into the concrete that I had a headache for two days with my helmet on. Well, see, I, A, so it, I think helmets rock. Helmet. Yes, yeah. helmets are good. And B, it makes me feel a lot less bad for the one time I fell off my bike here. You <laughs> saw, I just felt like adults shouldn't fall off a bike. <laughs> no, and but we do. Me, but no one helped you? I, I, I was um, uh, riding to the grocery store or something. It was like the first month I was here. Uh-huh. And I really, I hadn't ridden a bike since I was 16. And I'm 26 now, so that's like 10 years. And, and all of a sudden, I had to use this bike. And like, I don't care what they say about like, it's like a bike, riding a bike, you never forget. It's weird. I, yeah, I you forget. With that bike. For the first month I was here, I was afraid to ride it. And finally, like the one time I decided to go grocery shopping by myself using the bike, I went to go get up on the curb because I was at the grocery store and there was like a little bit of a piece of like PVC pipe next to the curb that I didn't see and I hit it. So instead of going up on the curb, the bike, the tire just kind of like collapsed underneath me, like slid out from under me. And I fell and I was embarrassed. But I, and nobody laughed, but at the same time, like I was like laying in the street and nobody helped me up. <laughs> I had to get up and get myself together and try not to like cry from the embarrassment. But yeah, no, there's not a lot. I mean, if it's someone who, like, really wrecks. Yeah. You just fall off a bike, I mean, I guess it's the little bit of the So, so, so your man's name is Hans, is that correct? Yes, that is his name. Hans? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Hans or Hans? How, how do you say it? No, Hans. Hans? And he doesn't wear a helmet, and he doesn't do a... Uh, bike light? You use, use a bike light, right? Well, he doesn't wear a helmet. He does do. He does. The, what he does is that headlight thing, like it's like a, like a, like I said, like a spelunking type of caving. Like oh, so head. he straps a light to his head. Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. I see. Well, it works. So he does carry it with him. If he needs it, he can just like you know stick it He's on. He's a his head. chocolate <laughs> miner. <laughs> a what? Belgian oh, chocolate miner, <laughs> like the. Going to work with the Keebler elves in mining some chocolate. You just called her man a Keebler elf. Yeah, 
No, I didn't say. I said he was going to the work. My man, a chocolate mining elf. I said he's a chocolate miner going to the to work with the Keebler elf. You called him a chocolate mining elf. I did elf. not. You did. I did a chocolate really, miner. That's that's a good way to not have us ever move to Now you're getting rid of them. That's not fair. You're 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 disabling their dream to move their sudden dream that probably just came just came up came like, up during the show. But like, have you heard of this one before? <laughs> Is it on your hundred things? Let's, I don't let's know. See. It's not. You need to have a hundred and one. Someday I'd like I to live move in to Portland, Portland because Belgium is boring. Uh, no, the only problem I have with it right now is that it's too far away from my family. That's really the only issue that I'm having with problems. The distance from my family, but otherwise, I mean, the education is really good and healthcare is basically taken care of. And I mean, it's a good place to be. It's just far away from my family. That and I miss being part. Peanut butter? You can't get peanut butter there? You can get peanut butter. You can get peanut butter, but like usually there's like two, sh- two jars of peanut butter on the shelf and they're like dusty from 1963. Oh. Because like, nobody, they don't like peanut butter over here. It's, they Do they eat peanut Nutella? Peanut yeah, what about Nutella? Yeah. Nutella, yeah, chocolate spread. Although, Nutella's are actually not the most popular one here because, you know, it's Belgium and they make chocolate for like a living, so they have better chocolate spread over here than but they do have Nutella and Bissell, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds. Do you want to hear um, something? Yeah, they, 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 they. I don't. I could give you all my peanut butter. I don't like peanut butter very much. I like peanut butter in my Reese's peanut butter cups. Other than that, I don't care for peanut butter. Yeah, it's well. I mean, I don't well, know. I do like peanut butter. But part of the reason that I don't get it, well, a Dutch peanut butter sucks. It's just not the same. How do you screw up peanut butter? It's just mm-hmm. peanuts and. Peanuts it's and oil or something? I don't know. The, the texture's real gritty. Like, it's not chunky, it's not smooth, it's just gritty. And the flavor is just not the same. I don't know how to explain it. It's just it's just not as good as American peanut butter. Um, what that, kind? And they don't make low fat. So, and because I love peanut butter so much, like, I would sit with a spoon and eat a jar of peanut butter if I have it. What, <laughs> so, what kind of peanut butter? Are you like a chunky peanut butter, super chunky, creamy? Um, not really creamy, but every now and then I I change it up and do like a chunky, super chunky. I don't do because you might as well just eat a peanut. Exactly. But, Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, definitely creamy. I prefer, although every now and then if I need some variety, I'll do the chunky. And it has to be just. I love Jif. You're a Jif mm-hmm. person? I am a Jif person. I've, I've had Skippy, I've had Peter Pan, and and when it comes down to it, I've got to do a Jif. Now, see, a peanut butter purist. I mean, Jif is full of fillers, right? Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Do I need to beep that out? No. <laughs> okay. All you have to do to find out is to just look at the ingredients list. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I've okay. had... I, um... Right before I moved, I was on this organic kick, and I did go and get, like, all-natural organic peanut butter. And I didn't smother. I don't remember what brand it was, but it was pretty good, and it was one of the name brands. I just don't remember what brand it was. Well, it was re- actually really good. real peanut butter separates, and it's hard to keep. Right. You know, it's separate. I mean, there's oil on top, and, and it separates, and you have to mix it back up, and it'll go rancid at some point. Yeah. Well, that's part, I mean, part of the thing is, I love, I love peanut butter, so it never goes bad. That's, I mean, there you I go. Are you okay? That was yeah. not a Mr. Chaos sound, sound effect. Sound effect. That wasn't, that was a phone's broken sound effect. Sound effect. Lilac Specs brings her own sound effects. Thank you very much. Yay! Yo! Oh. You know, I think we're going to have to go soon because I think I'm going to go have to harm the fingers of Mr. Chaos for pushing too many buttons yet again. Oh, no you don't. I think we're, we're getting on to the hour Are end of Are you having a party our... over there? Are people showing up? And... Um, we know that. We're, we're going to a party later this evening, but that's like not until, I think, five or something. Mm-hmm. Well... We're getting we're getting close to the hour end of our uh, of our evening, and you have to get up and do things, and I have to go to sleep soon. Is it morning? <laughs> is it morning here, honey? No. No, but is it's it morning, morning there? there? 
Okay, what time is it there? It's almost nine o'clock. Oh my god, it's almost midnight here. Yeah. It's like five to midnight. Is there anything else? Is there anyone you want to say hello to? Is there anything else you want to pimp out before we go? Um, no, I don't know. Hi, Miss Brown, the Poppins, and all my readers that come over, and oh, happy birthday to your daughter. That was all right. Yay! Yeah. Uh, oh, happy birthday! And um, I'll say I'll say hi to Miss Burroughs for you on Sunday. Awesome. Yeah. Did you give the a uh, blog site again? Yeah. Why don't you tell us all your blog site again? That's www.lilacspecs.com. <laughs> you know, I had, just had to do that. Visit me and, I don't know, comment. I don't give her comments. Come visit and give her some comment love. Love me. Love her. Love me, love me. Say that you love me. I'm not allowed to sing, and I shouldn't have done that. It's sad when I start to sing, but um, it was lovely having you on the show. Yes, thank you for having me. And somewhat painless, I hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was much less painful. Painful? Painful. Less painful. Less painful. Yay! <laughs> well, good, good night, Lilac Specs, and good night, all of you other lovely bloggy people, and good night, Treasure Licious. Thank you very much. <laughs> good night. Have a great day. Take care. Thanks. Sleep well. Bye bye.